Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Cinema and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at Wayfarers of the South Tigris. This is a new game from Garfield Games designed by Shen Phillips and S.J. McDonald. It plays from 1 to 4 players in 60 to 90 minutes. Yeah, so this is a new game, the first game of the South Tigris Tigris a trilogy. Yes. It was first the North Sea trilogy which yeah. we basically played uh, one, the cup we played a couple of them one time, yeah. long time ago. Not they very good. Love them. And Raiders is good. We only have Raiders of Scythia, but that's a great game. Yes. Then we had the West Kingdom series where we really loved Architects. Yeah. Paladins is a good game. Yeah. I want to play it again. And we didn't love Vikings. Yeah. You liked it better than me, but we also it fell down for you with the, the slope as well. So yes. now we are at a new trilogy and we're going to talk about it. We have played it and we're going to talk about it. First off, a small overview. In this game, you are, I think, explorers, astronomers. People going out. Or oh, wayfarers. From wayfarers you are. Going from Baghdad, I think, looking at things and making journals about what you see. Cool. That's the theme. Other than that, there's no theme. This is a Euro... It's a beige Euro game. Like, it's, it's literally... Yeah. It's almost yellow. It's more yellow than beige. That's my only big complaint. Bye! <laughs> no, basically it is a dice and worker placement game. You're going to place dice on your own action board. You're going to place workers. Uh, kind of like in, in other of these kind of games where there's a shared pool of workers. When I place the worker onto the one of the cards, then the worker isn't mine anymore and other people can take it in and then use it as their own. You try to accumulate different cards, as many different cards that you can get. And you're building up your own tableau, you have to build up your little caravan, which tells you what the different pips on the dice do for you. So some of them can have symbols that you need to do the actions. They can have things that manipulate the die, like a plus or a minus, uh, and all stuff like that. You're going to place the dice, you're going to place the workers, and sometimes you do a journal action, which makes you move on this board in the middle, on the, on the board in the middle of the board, uh, a, a track in the middle of the table, where you will uh, be moving, and when you move, you need to have specific tags that you see on your cars, kind of like in Terraforming Mars and, and other games also use tags, Ark Nova, for example. And you'll be moving up on those tracks, and when one person moves to the end of the track, the game is going to end, and then you're going to score points for a couple of things. We're going to talk more about that in gameplay. And that is a very brief overview. If you want more of like a detailed how to play and all of that, there's other channels that do that better than us. So you can go and check that out. So let's talk about the stuff. Let's talk about the yes. other stuff, for example. How? I'm going to ask you a question now yeah how does this game look it can looks... you tell me a bit about the artwork yes it <clears throat> is classic D'Amico art so if you know him you know what this game kind of looks yes. like you know what you get I like his style personally and it is the same quality as usual yeah. I think it's a great production it has a very um, bad insert I don't like to use the word bad but it's not ideal look well, at you this see all these little tiles here, like in here, it's like one tile. Uh, yeah, they're supposed to be like one, 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 one. We yeah. think, because we think. there's, like most we inserts, like most inserts, they don't tell you how to use them. Uh, but when you give us like 60 spaces for these tiles, and we have placed like the same tile in each of these, and they say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which makes me think what you say, that these that only are one of each has been made to be one in each of these rooms. And I get the idea because you're placing them on specific tile like spaces on the board. But this is, if you notice, this has a regular box size. What I've loved about the Garfield games, trilogy games before, or mm -hmm. like the games, is that they have a smaller box. Yeah. And I don't think that this insert is worth the bigger size. It's out of board. So like the oh, yeah. board okay. is the biggest reason. That's fine. But this one could also be in foldable or, or double like yeah. uh, at two boards. So this is not good. Yeah. But but I, I don't understand it. I don't see any reason to just not throw it out and, and, and not use it. No we... player rates in this game. No. Nope. Um, didn't feel like huge need for it, but always included in your games, people. But, but there is need for it because we're going to talk about this rule oh, yeah, book, that's true. which is the same <laughs> thing that we... Um, I probably have talked about it in other Garfield games. They are st they don't do anything to make the rulebooks better. The rulebooks are not horrible. This even has kind of an a trying to have an iconogra iconography on the back. The problem with these games, and this was not the worst of them, is that some cards just have a symbol that is nowhere and you have to guess what it means. Mm. So deduct, deduct thing based on what these symbols are, you have to deduce what this symbol now means. And it's not like it's a big problem, but it just annoys me that there's not a single 
like a single of these uh, examples of what these cards do. If you had like 10 of them, I understand in these games there's so many different cards, yeah. but you can't have it. If you had like 10 different ones and you say like, okay, so based on these, it's easier for me to understand the other ones. Yeah. That is a thing that I think is a problem with all the Garfield games rulebook I have read. They're not horrible, but to me they're not great rulebooks. So let's talk about playtime, player count, how to play. I'm not going to talk about that, just the two first ones. <laughs> yes, we have played this with two, three, and four players. That's true, and it I has was there. taken us about six to two, 120 minutes. Yeah. And That's I true. think that the three and four players was <laughs> like a remarkably better experience for, oh, yeah. for me than yeah. the two player. And that is, it has something to do with the interaction with yes. the cards and workers. Uh, but I think that three and four players is the way to go with this game. And also, even though there are ways to go around this, which I like, all of these games, it has uh, card decks of cards mm. and there's no way to like wipe them yes, out so when you play two more. players there's less cycling which means that oh there's horrible cards there nobody's gonna get them and you're stuck with that there's ways around that in this game luckily but there um, I would if I were to play this again I would play it with three or four players yeah. and the 120 minutes to say that that was a long game uh, it's probably gonna be if you play with four players to know the game you could yeah. I, I think you can play it like in 90 minutes something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's right. The game has kind of two main things not four two main things which is dice placement and worker placement and um, the dice placement is all very your own little puzzle Nobody yeah. can do anything about that uh, Everybody starts with their same dice worker placement spaces and you can get cards to place more of, of, of them on it uh, and the worker placement is uh, is all the more interactive. Let's start talking a bit about the dice placement. Mm. Uh, what I like a lot about this is like you roll the dice and you have numbers on them. The numbers doesn't really matter, but the numbers is you have this caravan, uh, which is called where you place these tiles that upgrade the dice. Could yes. you talk a bit about that system? Yeah, absolutely. So if I, for example, have a one, there's mm -hmm. a camel symbol on that <clears> and I have a worker placement space that needs a camel, I can yep. use that one to go there. There's also some blank spaces that I don't need a specific uh, mm -hmm. die symbol to go. And you can have these tiles, as you said, that give yep. you bonuses or manipulates the die or gives you more symbols for yeah. you to do more actions. So mostly you're building up your own little like dice manipulation, dice yep. mitigation board. You can play the game by doing heavy that. Last time we played I just had a couple of tiles. Uh, my cousin had like 10 or something yeah. and, and that was the Different first. Different ways to go about yeah, that. Yeah, a couple of times I played I also had like loads of them. So like basically whatever die I had I could do whatever I wanted to do with it. Mm. And I was like oh I get a 2 then I can make it into a 3 and I can make that 3 into a 4. Yeah. And the 4 has all the symbols so I'm gonna place it there and I can do whatever I want. Yeah. So I, I really enjoy that part. I, I think that's a very neat way. I'm always a fan of this building my own strategy, mm. building up like my own little player board so I can, my dice are different than your dice mm. and I think it's made in a very clever way here. Yes, I, I think, think this is my, very unique. This is one of my favorite uh, mechanisms of the game. I agree. Where you have like, instead of doing, oh you have to take off the dice and all that, you can use normal six-sided dice and you add this stuff to make them unique, which I really enjoyed. Yes. The other part uh, is the worker placement spaces that you need the, the little workers, the meebles for. Yes. And those feel um, sometimes a little bit weaker for me than the dice actions. I'd rather do an eye dice action mo most of the times. Mm -hmm. as, um, but also uh, I think it's very clever with the, with the balance, the, these two worker placement things mm -hmm. that are separate. Um, and also how the workers then become uh, like fair, fair game for everyone. Everybody can get it. Yeah, because when we, we, we heard about this game and when we were to play it, we really liked to feel like the, it feels like a unique blend of mechanism, as I did, and it is a unique blend of mechanisms, the worker placement and the dice placement. I was like, oh, that's going to be very exciting. And I think you kind of said about what I was feeling as well, mm. that because there's usually, for me, and, and everybody we play with had kind of had this feeling, that we use our dice because those are great actions and make us come, come, come further. The worker placement actions are okay. The green ones, which are the best ones, are pretty good. Uh, so those you're probably going to do. And the, the yellow and blue ones are very situational. They're just like, oh, I need this now, so I might do that now if I can't get it from somewhere else. But, but we ended up not using the workers that much. Like the dice were much more interesting. And 
and, and it didn't engage me in a way that I thought it would do. Yeah, I agree. I think that I had. It sounds very cool, mm-hmm. but in like in in real life, it doesn't engage me, as you said. And a lot of the times, I either felt like, okay, I have all these workers. Mm-hmm. I don't have a limit for how many I can have. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have all these workers, but I'd rather do these dice actions and then like rest and get my dice back and mm-hmm. continue on with that. And then there's very few of the meeples on the board because I'm hoarding all of them. Yeah, and I, I don't think like because some people will, will think like I don't think it's because oh I don't want anybody no, else no, to no. get them because I didn't really care about that. No, I didn't care because I got to use it and then somebody else got to use. It. That's kind of the, the economy. But of course, of it. that is a part of it. You could okay, yeah. be like oh I want to hoard these. The first time I played, <coughs> I was hoarding them a little bit on purpose because yeah. I knew that you were needing those. Mm-hmm. Um, but but also I I think that sometimes you can be a very empty workers and and be like okay there's nothing i can do now mm-hmm. because you have all of them but i think that i think that like when you learn the game more yeah i think it's usually it, like the, the hoarding for hoarding sake i don't think it's a problem because it's usually better to use it than to not use it but there's always the reason for me that i don't always use them at the as soon as i think like we made a more game more engaging and interacting interactive is because it's usually every something else that feels more pressing and feels more important to do mm. like getting the card because that card is the card i want to be yeah, able to get that, that card yeah. i have to use the dice and, and rest and then i have to get it back and do the card and get the card and then i might use the worker yeah but like in in the if you would like be ideally playing mm-hmm. here you should be like okay that action is uh, good i'm going to go there and uh, on a whole round goes by and i can now buy that card because yeah if you are in that back. situation yeah. of course but that doesn't happen very often and like i just don't mm. care too much for it no, and really? also like it, it's not that it's. I, I don't think you play around the workers. Yeah. I feel like they. I, I really enjoy like when you play Raiders of Stadia, for example, or Raiders of the North Sea, that mechanism of placing a worker, taking a worker, mm. and I think they've tried to evolve that into something here. And I am basically, we're gonna go to the next point now because yes. this is like we think it's a great idea, but for us it wasn't like wow, this is a cool thing. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the cards because mm-hmm. there are a lot of cards in the game. This and game is all about cards. It's a lot about cards, and what I think it's uh, nice is that there's a lot of different cards, mm-hmm. but in like inside the categories, mm-hmm. they're all pretty like similar. Yeah. Uh, so when you're looking for specific cards to play, you have something to choose from because yep. they have they have similarities, and a lot of times you want to get the cards just to get these uh, tags yep. to add to your final score and moving up on the the track Track, that you need them for Um, so I think that the cards are nice oh yeah I I think that there there is like when you learn the game it feels a bit overwhelming because it's like there's one two three four five different decks of cards and in each of the uh, water and the uh, land cards there's two different in there as well there's like four five six seven and in the space there's also Four different cards, and it's like and ten, ten different cards, yeah. uh, ten different type of cards in the game, and it just feels like so much, but it's really not that much because, as you said, like many of them are similar. I do enjoy like there's different ways the cards work, mm. and when you build up your tableau, for example, to have a space card, you used to have to have a land or sea land or sea card to place on top of it or to place it on top of, and then you can have these inspiration cards. You can double the scoring for the space cards, and you have a person that you can like basically send to that location. Uh, to send a specific location so they add to that action or that ability yeah i enjoy all of these things and i think like this is another thing that i usually enjoy in games is that um, the, the tableau building mm. one thing here is that at the beginning of the game there's one space where you can get a land card and one space where you can get a a, a c card or a water card whatever it's called a water card that's it uh, and and then you cannot get any more before you reset and there's some cards that lets you do it again mm. so if you get those uh, then it's probably a good thing to go for that strategy to get money of those cards uh, but it feels kind of I, I don't know like it, it feels kind of more of a tactical thing yeah what strategy I go for because oh that card is there now that means that I can now get that and I can get two of these each time I do uh, before I do a rest action, so maybe now I'm going to go heavily into those cards mm. uh, for different reasons that we're going to come clear. 
probably soon. Absolutely. There are a few ways to score points in this game. And it's I not mean, many. It, there's a few. Yeah. Uh, there are the sets that you use, um, that you score with the different um, symbols. Mm -hmm. You still want to score many of the same. Like yes. that is the, you, there's four main symbols and you will score points if you had one of each as like a set collection mm. and if you have many of each score points. Yes, and also the tiles that you upgrade your caravan mm -hmm. with, the dice manipulation mm -hmm. basically. And the last thing that I'm totally blanking on right now, what is that? I don't know. The star cards. Yes, thank yes. you. You have scoring for that. So you're trying to, for example, let's say a star, a star card says that you're getting points for every a Vista card that you have. Mm -hmm. It's a card type. Yep. And then you can double it and you have another criteria that you have to fulfill to, to double points. Yeah, and there's a few other ones in the space cards as well. You have the Meteors, which is also kind of set collection, where you have set collection against the players. If they come up the last game you play, we had zero. Yeah. It was not a single one, but yep. basically those like if you they are worth points, but if you ever have the most of the meteor tags, every one of the meteor cards are worth four points. Mm. I did that like heavily in one game, which was fun because it's come up. Yeah. But there's no wide way to cycle the space cards, which there are on some of the other decks, mm. which means that if they don't come up, they don't come up. So yes. if you get one of them and like, hey, that's awesome, and then it's gonna not score a lot of points, but then again, you haven't like used a lot of resources to get that. <clears throat> like very simple. I, I think that also important to say like this is a game where you never have enough resources like mm, there's only yeah. two resources the money and the um, provisions. provisions which are the two things that are in the Gorful games yeah and but they're not uh, there's always too little of them yes. and it's hard to come by Absolutely. which i like i like yeah. that you don't always have it's what very you tight want on to resources have. and sometimes it feels a little lucky with the cards for example mm -hmm. if you're going yeah. for a meteor strategy and there's no meteors there's nothing you can do about it again so, yeah. tactical uh, absolutely so you have that in mind as well um journaling the thing that you do um usually when you rest and like reset your dice yeah. is uh, interesting then you're moving up on this track yeah. uh, and it's uh, i think I think it's a neat balance between having uh, the right cards to move up mm -hmm. on the track but also having cards that you can actually score with at the end of the game. You shouldn't be like forgetting points just to move up on this track. No, and why are you moving on this track? There's two different reasons. One of them is that you get bonuses. Yeah. Uh, you get some pretty cool bonuses. For example, you get more dice, you get the inspiration cards that can, because there's kind of like quests to double the, the star cards that have uh, end of game scoring. Uh, and you get his bonuses when you move along, very powerful bonuses. The second thing is that this game is 100% player driven and game trigger. There's nothing that stops the game. So if you play in a very weird group, you could play this for weeks. I don't think it's going to happen because it's a normal thing that you want to move on the journal track because when one person comes to the end of the journal track, uh, then the game is that that's the game and trigger yeah. and everybody gonna get another turn including the person who got to the end so it, when you first play this game it might feel like it's a racing game mm. because you want to go fast on this track but then you might not get any points yeah so I don't feel like it is and I don't feel like I feel like learning the balance of how fast you want to move because you want to get these bonuses but you don't want to and you want if you are ahead you want the game to end yeah it's one of those games that when you, the farther you are on this, the more power you have in the game, basically. Yeah. Because if I am ahead and you are like a bit behind, the other players are a bit behind, then I basically am more in, in power of when to stop the game. Mm -hmm. And if I see that, oh, but you have more points than me, so I'm not going to stop the game. But I say, oh, yeah, I'm, I have a lot more points than you, so I'm going to stop the game now. Uh, what I like most about it is, for me, it's a balance thing yeah. and a timing thing. So let's say, for example, that uh, the next space is, you always have some options. Yeah. Oh, oh, which path, uh, what uh, what tags you need to advance on the track. Let's say that I'm going for to have three green cards. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. Then I think that my main focus this turn before I reset should be mm -hmm. to have that. So I don't like waste. Uh, um, maybe. Maybe. Depending on Maybe. what you want to do, because yeah. if I want to go for loads of sets yeah. with these cards, it maybe isn't that important for me to get that purple yeah, yeah, pile. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, as you say, the balance mm. of when you want to move, when you don't want to move. I yeah. don't think it's super important to move every time, depending on what you want to do. Yeah. What you're going to do 
when they come for you. Could, yeah, but it gives and, you kind of like it could give you a direction. Is oh, what yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the first time you play, like the first time you played, it was like, oh, it's very helpful. I to have just want to have these tags. Yeah, but it yeah. also makes the game weird the first time yeah, you play that's true. because you don't understand how to get the points. You don't understand how to do all of these things. You just want to move on the track because you feel like, oh, that is good. That's something I can do. Yeah. I can focus on that. And then the game ends. I'm like, okay, I got some points, I guess, because I did some things. Yeah. Um, and when you play it more, you're going to get more of that strategy. So wait, and who is this for? I think this is a medium game. Uh, this is a worker place with, with a twist. With a twist. Uh, I, I like that uh, personally. Um, and I think it's uh, a game for those who like to build kind of their own tableau mm -hmm. with their own actions and their own strategy. It is in many ways a very tactical game though. Yeah. Um, and I think also that I prefer to play this game with three or four players. I um, absolutely agree. I would not have this game to play with only two. Okay. so. Let's go. Final thoughts. Oh yeah, um, I d don't care too much for this game. I mm -hmm. think it's nice. I yeah. think it's fine. Mm -hmm. But I have no desire to play it again. I think that for the idea of it being like this interaction on the board with mm -hmm. these workers, with the balance between the um, dice and the workers on the board, it just didn't uh, get to me mm -hmm. that way. I didn't feel like there was, was uh, too much inf uh, interaction between the players. Yeah. I would wish it to be a little bit more for this kind of game. I didn't really care too much about what you were doing or my like opponents mm -hmm. and I would wish to be more invested in that. Uh, not all games, but in this game I would wish for that. So even though I like a lot of the mechanisms in the game, mm -hmm. as a whole it doesn't really speak that much to me. I think it's a fine game. Yeah. I th think I would like place it above average at like uh, 6.5 okay. around there. Yeah. I like it a bit more than you. I think that the first two times I didn't like it that much. The third time we played and onwards I was getting it a bit more and, and not that you didn't get it, that's not what I'm meaning. But mm -hmm. I, I was like, oh, I, I, okay, there's different things to do here. I'm not about rushing on that track. You can go for different things. I think it's a fine game. It's in the same category for me. I don't have a desire to play it again. I will not choose to play it again. But if someone's like, oh, I want to play this, I will play it and I will have fun. I, I think it's a good game for me. Um, I'm excited to see it in the next two ones, oh, yeah. like because there's for been sure. there's been like one really good one in each of them. So hopefully there's going to be one really good one in this one as well. I for me it's a good game. I'm going to give it a seven. Yeah. Cool. And I think that's the end of this video. If you are still here and you have not subscribed, you can do so now by clicking the subscribe button down there. It's fun and it's free. It makes us happy. Like this. If you want to do something that's not free, you can go to patreoncom ramblings and support us there. And that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Sarah. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And bye bye.